Lou here. You know, Coraline is my favorite movie of all time. I think it's been beaten to death, especially by YouTubers who do almost 30 videos theorizing Coraline, my gosh, that Coraline is an incredible movie. People always talk about how much they love the book or the movie, but I think it's time to review the video game. Now roll the intro and let's get started. Now, if you've been on this channel long enough, and if you have been on this channel, then thank you so much for being here since day one. If not, then I have talked about this game before on my channel. I've done some let's plays of it with my friends talking shit with me about the game, but I thought I'd do something more <laughs> professional. AKA, I don't have a microphone I got at Best Buy for $20 anymore. And that's how it's done arranging dead dogs. Now, let's begin. Coraline the Video Game, or Coraline An Adventure Too Weird for Words, is a video game based on the highly acclaimed film Coraline released on the PS2, Wii, and Nintendo DS in January 2009. Developed by Vivendi Games, known for developing the Crash Bandicoot spin-off games and The Simpsons Hit and Run. Though today, I will be speaking of the PS2 and Wii versions as they play identically with just slightly different controls. I think the DS version plays like a collectathon or something? I'm not too sure as it's pretty rare to find online. Now, I will warn that I am playing a emulated version of this game. Any visual lag you see is because of the emulator I'm using. To be specific, I'm using the Wii emulator version as the PS2 emulated version is pretty broken for some reason as going upstairs causes a crash and the lag is so bad that it's unplayable. Both emulated versions also severely mess up the audio, to which I can't figure out a way to fix, as no one seems to have a solid answer on how to fix audio issues on emulators. Now, why am I emulating this game? Even though the PS2 game is 20 bucks, I don't have a PS2 and a capture card, and I find it very irresponsible of me to spend over $100 on a game I am only going to be playing one time and that's it. I also just support emulators in general, as it's allowed me to play games that don't have a proper release on other platforms. Okay, so what I find strange right off the bat is that this game released pretty much a week before the movie. Considering most video game tie-ins release after, this means that those who bought this game before the movie were just asking for huge spoilers, so whoopsies! Now, let's begin. Coraline's parents moved her from Pontiac, Michigan to Ashland, Oregon, where now she lives in an apartment called the Pink Palace. Her parents write gardening catalogs for a living, and they're still poor, so Coraline has nothing to eat, she lives in a rundown apartment filled with bugs, and has strange neighbors. They're so broke that they don't even have a TV, basic cable, or even books. She pretty much has nothing to do and no one to talk to other than a weird kid named YB, so her life is pretty boring. And she's sad that she has nothing to do. Out of nowhere, a tiny door opens where she travels into a copy of her own world, but everything is suspiciously better. There she meets her other mother, a woman with button eyes who's a perfect copy of her mother, but appears more loving and doting, which is something Coraline does kind of wish her parents would be, but they are busy so they can't. Though everything appears to be great in this other world, it's all a trap and the button-eyed other mother actually does this with every child who moves into this apartment. Originally, it was a large house that was later divided up into apartments, by the way. With the help of a black cat, Coraline learns the truth that the other mother wants to sew buttons into Coraline's eyes so she can take her soul, because eyes are the windows to the soul as they say, and eat it, thus trapping Coraline's soul here forever. With the help of some ghost kids who are previous victims of the other mother who allowed her to sew buttons into their eyes when they were alive, Coraline escapes this nightmare and returns to her real parents with plenty of PTSD and life lessons learned. Though keep in mind I am making this short, I think we all know the story of Coraline by now and the video game does shorten the story of this movie quite a lot. Instead of personal conflicts like Coraline fighting with her mom over a pair of gloves because her parents aren't that honest about their financial situation, it's 
weird nightmare segments? I'm not quite sure what it's about, to be honest. YB says he's literally never been inside the apartments because his grandma's sister was a victim of the other mother, so she banned YB from ever entering there for his own safety. So how she knows about YB and apparently wants him as her next victim is beyond me. Then again, I guess she did see YB when he gave Coraline her little doll, but still. Another strange thing was that it takes influence from the books as well, of all things. The biggest example was the lack of the iconic ragdoll. You know, the ragdoll that probably made hundreds of small children absolutely terrified of Lollaloopsie dolls. I just find it odd since the opening scene of the movie is a cutscene for this game when you start it up, but there's no ragdoll in sight in the game. Instead of a ragdoll, it's mice. Now, in the books, it's rats that lead Coraline to the door and all that, but rats are kind of terrifying in this movie and the book, so cute little mice with button eyes is probably the better option. Also, the fact that the other mother's true form at the end of the game looks more similar to her book counterpart rather than her movie. One. While I think the story here is a decent enough adaptation of the movie, the lack of the most iconic moments does make me a little disappointed, especially the new plot thread of the other mother wanting YB now too. It's just a really interesting plot line and I wish they went somewhere with it, but it honestly goes nowhere. They also never introduced the ghost children, so when the cutscene talks about the deal between the other mother and Coraline, Assuming a kid didn't watch the movie, or you've never seen Coraline for some strange reason, then you're not gonna know who they are. The original voice for Coraline, the cat, and YB all make a return to voice their characters, but everyone else is replaced by someone trying to make an attempt to sound like the original actor. Sometimes it works like Bobinski and Miss Forcible, but other times it's an actress way too recognizable, like Miss Spink. I mean, it's still decent enough though. It's at least better than most movie tie-in games, and that's definitely saying a lot. Now, this is a game for kids. I know people do say that kids should have smarter games, and I do agree with that statement, but if a kid does like simple things, or if they're really young, then come on guys, let's have kids enjoy things. I say this because this gameplay is for a young mind, if I'm being honest. You do solve very easy puzzles which revolve around moving boxes and balancing and aiming things. It's all extremely simple to be honest, but it's probably because the game focuses so much on minigames. That's right everyone, it's a minigame game, woohoo! The minigames range from incredibly easy that I question your sanity if you can't solve it to FUCK YOU MISS SPRING ENFORCEBLE THIS IS FUCKING CHEATING OH MY GOSH! Seriously, fuck that Go Fish minigame so hard up its own ass. Now, the PS2 and Wii versions control pretty much the same with moving Coraline around with a little nub, pressing a button to climb things, and another to carry it. The only issue I encountered is due to a emulator issue with the Wii one. Because the Wii is motion controlled, getting motion controls to work with a joystick instead of real motion controls is very tricky. Yes, by the way, there is a way to hook up a real Wii remote to your computer for emulation purposes, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm not 100% confident it works. Anyway, remembering where every button is proves to be a challenge too, because unlike literally every console ever that has a similar button layout in some capacity, the Wii remote is fucking weird, so remembering where each button is on my PS4 controller for a Wii button proved to be a challenging experience, especially for the quick timed event mini games. That's right everyone, there's quick time events too! Woohoo! Either way though, I think if you're playing it on a real Wii, or if you somehow got the PS2 emulation to work, then I don't think the gameplay is that bad, especially for kids. Like if a 9 year old played this as one of their first video games, I think younger people must have had a blast. I know I would have had a blast playing this game when I had a PS2 when I was younger. Just keep in mind that, yeah, the gameplay is definitely not for adults in mind. They're not so bad, I mean, 
They look like the characters well enough, but that's a given since Coraline is a real-life silicone puppet, so getting the 360 proportions for that model probably helped a lot when working on this game. I mean, the designs aren't so bad when they stick to the movie, but when they deviate from it, it's cheap. There's also these opening cutscenes that narrate the story in the style of the book voiced by the man who does the cat. The opening cutscenes literally only use professional promo images, poor screenshots that were probably given to them, and the rest they had drawn in to compensate. Sometimes it's cute, like Coraline trying on her mom's makeup, and other times it's noticeably bad. I mean, the graphics are decent enough for the era, they're bad, but I'm also taking it into account the PS2 and Wii's graphical capabilities at the time, and the fact that this is a cheap movie tie-in game, so it's not like there was a lot of love and care put into this game. Cheat codes! That's right, everybody. This game has cheat codes. Here we go, ladies and gents. Cheese. Gives Coraline button eyes. Well, free hall pass to skip certain difficult portions of the games when they allow it. Beats. Unlimited health during the nightmare sequences because trust me, that part is very annoying. Beldem. Unlimited level skip. There's also a shop in the game that lets you use buttons you get from playing minigames to buy things like pictures you found throughout the game, cutscene clips, and costumes for Coraline! These costumes include her iconic pajamas, YB's outfit, and my personal favorite, the star-covered turtleneck! Yeah, maybe I was a smidge inspired by this outfit when first designing my avatar, even if my avatar is just me as casually as it gets. The biggest issue I find with the costumes though is that they don't stay on forever. As soon as you get to the other world when you're about the halfway point, Coraline's outfits are completely disabled and you're back to the yellow raincoat. This game is... decent enough. I've played a couple of movie tie-in games before, and Coraline is the better one of a lot of them, even if it's just mini-games on top of mini-games. I guess there is an incentive to play every mini-game, because it does give a tally on how many mini-games you could find or play, but the game doesn't have any new Game Plus options. I guess you could just play a fuck ton of minigames to unlock everything, but it just seems extremely tedious, especially when you can use cheats. Though remember that these cheats are only on for as long as you play the game. When you close the game to play something else, the cheats will disappear so you have to input them again. Do I think people should play this game if they found it at a thrift store? I mean, not Really? The game is painfully easy. It's only about five hours long if you're just playing one of each minigame you come across, and the fact that there is a cheat code that lets you skip any level or portion of the game you want, then it makes the time go by even faster. If you want to play the game, then honestly, go ahead. But just keep an open mind that this game is definitely meant for little kids in mind. Though don't be like some people who play or watch bad adaptations of something and then say that the whole series as a whole sucks because they watched one bad adaptation. You want the full Coraline experience? Just watch the movie or read the book. Trust me, it's a whole lot better than this. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. And if any older new subs would like to help support the channel in any way, then feel free to visit my Ko-fi page down below in the description, along with my social media tabs. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!